Tonight, we'll be talking about the Honeycomb Aeronautical Alpha Flight Controls. Good evening, everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation. And as I said in the intro there, we will be talking about the Honeycomb Aeronautical Flight Controls. Now I'm gonna shorten that up to the Alpha Yoke. Now I've had this for going on four to five months and tonight it's gonna to be a full on review. Similar to that of what I did for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. However, instead of having three different reviews, we're gonna just do one and done for the Alpha Yoke, mainly because I feel like there's already been a lot that's been said about it, and this review is following up on the heels of many other reviews out there. And if you guys have questions or comments about this review, about the Alpha Yoke, please leave them in the comments section below. If you're looking to talk to anybody from Honeycomb Aeronautical, they will be at Oshkosh 2020 Warren if you guys are gonna be there. I hope so, it's gonna be a great air show. They are gonna be in the Learn to Fly Center at Oshkosh 2021. It's going to be a uh, building kind of tent setup, and maybe I'll have a map. But if you're going to Oshkosh 2021, Honeycomb Aeronautical will be there with their own area within or working with EAA in the Learn to Fly Center. So if you want to go talk to those folks, they will be there. I will be there, but I will not be there with Honeycomb. I will be somewhere else working for a different company doing some other work. Hit me up in the comment section below if you'd like to meet up and talk about any of these products firsthand with me as well instead of just with them or both and vice versa, whatever. And I'll give you my honest opinion in person. But this review is going to break down the Honeycomb Aeronautical Alpha Yoke into a couple of different areas. First, we're gonna talk about build quality. Following that, we're gonna talk about functionality and a little bit of the customizability with that, after, we're going to lead into SIM implementation, setup, and use. And then we're going to finally talk about the cost and just close out the video. Now, if you like any of the styles of my videos or if you want to check out any of the others, look at my channel here on YouTube. Like and subscribe if you'd like. And without further ado, let's jump in and let's lay out the strong points real quick and a couple of the cons and then get into the reasons why I find this. I know I should leave that at the end, but in all honesty, if you're really watching on YouTube, you're probably gonna watch for a couple minutes and then go find something else to watch. So why not give you the good bit right now? So the pros about the Alpha Yoke. Well, it's right behind me. So I'll just grab it and bring it forward and give you a lot of the pros real quick. Fit and finish, it's great. Good plastic feel, awesome centering spring. Good switches, awesome trim implementation with the dual trim pieces that you can customize the way you want. The switches, they are are great no issues there no jagged parts easy to plug and play cons well if 250 dollars is too much for you then the alpha yoke might be out of your price point but if you're willing to save up that money this is probably the best ever consumer grade probably in its own market calling it a prosumer grade product and that's kind of a con it's kind of a compliment all at the same time but Couple, two other things, one, two. Starter switch, be great if it had a spring so it would bounce back out of both. And then in a future version, it'd be great to get rid of this cable because without that cable, this doesn't work. But to me, flying older aircraft, I'm used to a push to talk switch that's plugged in in a similar manner. So it doesn't bother me at all and I don't think it'll bother anybody overall, but it'd be nice to see those things remedy in the future. So those are your pros and cons real quick. Let's talk about why those are pros, a couple of the cons, and why I recommend the Honeycomb Aeronautical Flight Control System or, or Flight Controls or the Alpha Yoke to anybody that's willing to save up and buy it. First, build quality. Build quality is impeccable compared to other products that I have sold in the past. I'm not selling this, but I have sold SciTech products in the past way back in the day and some of the Sciatec products were good, but they had a couple of issues here. These, some of the products were a little bit uh, quality control that wasn't always perfect, and they didn't always fit together all that well, leaving a couple of jagged edges, or maybe loose areas. If you've bought a lot of the Sciatec stuff in the past, you know what I mean. 
but with the alpha controls or the alpha yoke there are no real jagged edges everything's smooth and a quality plastic finish it is a matte finish so if you've got oily hands or if you sim while you eat doritos or cheetos you're probably going to want to have something to clean it off with because that matte finish is going to show pretty much every piece of oil or dirt dust and cheeto dust that you might have now the feel of the plastic while it is plastic is solid there's nothing strange or odd about the plastic i like the way it feels and it feels similar to that of things that i've flown in the past as far as consumer grade products go this is above that of even my cessna yoke from SciTech all those years ago and i can't find any problems with it so far so durability wise for the build quality i don't know yet i'll be honest with you i've only had mine for four to five months the people i've reached out to and at least seen on forums i've seen positive information and it should wear and tear pretty well i expect the centering spring is really strong i hope that holds out for the next several years like my Cessna yoke did from SciTech all those years ago which is probably the best yoke that SciTech made unfortunately Logitech is not making that yoke yet but for price point wise for everything you get with this yoke everything fit and finish and durability looks projected to be pretty good my kids have used it I've used the alpha yoke and it stood up to everybody for countless hours already and I expect that to continue in the future now functionality and customizability this is one of those things that's going to depend on where you are on your flight sim experience how well you know your sims and what you're expecting out of this because if all you expect to do is plug and play maybe you won't get the full use out of it because default profiles don't always tie in every feature that you might want or expect so let's get into this and let's talk about the buttons the switches the trims the starter switch which we've already talked about and if you don't plug in that cable that I was talking about you're not going to use anything on the hand wheel except the axes or the yoke itself so make sure you plug that in but let's talk about the switches the nice thing about the switches are they have a good feel to them. they have good tactile feedback they don't hang in intermediate positions which is really important you know when you're pressing them you know when you're switching them you can hear them go back and forth so if you're setting up your avionics, your alternators, your batteries, all those different things onto the switches is gonna work really well. And then if you're doing the lights and other things as well as they're pre-labeled, it's really nice to have. It takes you away from having to click everything on the screen with your mouse, which is annoying, especially if you're flying multiple different aircraft within the flight sim world or different types of interiors. It's a lot easier to just have those all keyed up and ready to go instead of going click, click uh, where's it oh it's over there click 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 oh I think we got it all ah oh, man I forgot the strobes no you got it all tied in to the alpha yoke which is really nice and you have a good feedback when you've switched that switch buttons are the same way there's really nothing that's a surprise on the alpha yoke it aside from that it's great and it works the way I expect it to work now the other thing that I like about the Alpha Yoke, the buttons, the switches, the POV hat, which is assignable to whatever you might want it to be, all those things are great. I don't have any problems with them. They feel good. They click the way I expect them to do. They have an audible sound to it. But the other thing that I really, really like are the trim switches. The trims, you have the dual trim for both the pitch and the roll, or rudder, which would be yaw. And they work nicely they work in the sim they're dual in a sense that they work that you would expect if you're flying a real aircraft that has a full trim system in it because usually they have two pieces so that way you don't do it by mistake but you also have the ability to maybe split those into two different things so for your pitch trim you have the two that are redundant for each other but maybe you could split it one could be trim up and down the other one could be used for something else like zoom in zoom out or maybe even toggling the switch for a 430 or 530 clicking up and down for one of the menu systems within a gps anything in far between and the same can be done for the rudder or roll trim it's nice you have a lot of opportunity for the functionality and customizability of this unit which drives more and more into why it's something i recommend for people that want the highest fidelity in a flight sim peripheral product ah, gotta catch my breath so there is one thing with the trims they are unguarded they are kind of exposed 
So I don't know over the next year or so, this is something I'll probably come back to. I will revisit both the Brava Throttle Quadrant and the Alpha Yoke after a year of ownership of the two together. So look for something like that 2022 and talking about how everything is aged and that'll be a durability follow-up. But with the way the trims are, they are exposed in a sense. So I'm not sure how often I might have to clean them in the future because in most environments, we're gonna see some dust depending on where you live. If you have an air filter, if you have a good filtration system in your house, we all have dust, it's part of life. But some environments are dustier than others and I don't know where that breakoff point is where the dust becomes so much that it might cake up within the overall mechanisms for the trims and then you have to get in there and clean them and what that will really entail for how much cleaning you have to do. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But aside from that, I like every button and switch on the Alpha Yoke. The other thing that I really, really like about the Alpha Yoke are the axes. So we only have two. We have roll and we have pitch. The nice thing is they center really well. The resistance on the centering spring is nice and it reminds me of the feel of an aircraft in flight. It doesn't remind me of the feel of an aircraft while it's stationary on the ground with no engines running because it's really easy to move the flight controls at that point. But it reminds me of an aircraft in flight, which is really what we're going for here. Somebody thought about this. Somebody got the memo for once that we needed just a little bit more resistance when we're flying, which is great. Honeycomb, thank you guys for actually listening. And thanks for actually one of you, or maybe I think, how many of you guys are pilots? I know at least of one person for sure that's a pilot there. But there are a lot of people that have been working on this project, working with Honeycomb, to come together to make a quality prosumer grade product that I like. And I like the Axes for one other great reason, and I'm gonna have to grab it for this. Now, Logitech and CH do not do this. Oh, like a real airplane. Full 90 degrees of deflection. Who would have thunk? Somebody actually thought out a flight control system that works like a real aircraft, which to me is important. Now, I know some people will say it doesn't matter for flight sim training, for flight sim use overall, but if you're going for the highest fidelity, if you're gonna be spending money, your hard earned money, why not go for the best? Why not go for something that's gonna give you the most realism, especially if you're going out there and you're doing those Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 challenges, the landing challenges, the crosswind challenges. You want all the input you can get and you want it to feel like a real airplane, don't you? Then don't go for the Pro Flight Yoke or whatever the world Logitech is calling that rehash from SciTech that I never really liked. I preferred the Cessna yoke over that. And I really wish they would make the Cessna yoke again because it was a great, simple product. But alas, somebody came out with a product that's actually good and has a lot of features tied into the unit. It's right there. But I'm digressing from the subject matter. The axes are great. I like the pitch, I like the roll, and I feel confident that they should age well. But most of all, I like the fact that we have a full 90 degrees of deflection. So when you really do want to cross, practice crosswind landings, crosswind, crosswind takeoffs, anything in between like that, you have something that's going to give you the fidelity, or at least as close as you can get, out of a consumer grade, prosumer grade product that will be like actually practicing in real life. And that's important. Now, that's the end of talking about the functionality or the switches and everything and axes. We're gonna get into sim implementation, setup and use. And this is gonna depend on the flight simulator you use and how well you know them. Because we could go from novice to brand new to flight simulation, to people that have been around it for a few years and are getting into the overlying software you can use to control things like the Alpha, the Bravo, or anything else that you might buy for a flight sim setup to people that go in and make their own coding for flight simulations and work with other people on the forums to develop and make overall new plugins or software to go on top. But instead of all that, we're gonna talk at a very basic level here. Regardless of whether or not you're using Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 on a PC, Xbox, or X-Plane 11 or Prepare 3D, what I wanna tell everybody right now in this portion of the video, please take the time to go in and learn how to make your own profiles for the flight sim. You'll be happy you did it, 
it'll make your flight sim experience even better and then you can fine tune it for your aircraft if you own an aircraft or an aircraft that you prefer to fly out of all the time that you're simming there we go please learn how to assign Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, you got to go in and you could go through the assigned column or the unassigned column. I feel like that whole menu system in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is way too complex and could be so much simpler. And for once, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, if you wanted to take a menu system from somebody that I would recommend, go look at X-Plane. Their overall menu system is so much easier. It's so much more visual and easily interpreted by the end user to get everything going and even faster. So please, take some idea from somebody else that's been going for a while that has a good tried and true system. And also while you're at it, get some of the stuff like their simple systems implementation and physics brought over to MSFS 2020, please. It's a great sim, but it still feels more arcade than a flight sim. I'm digressing again, but Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is being handled by Asobo for the Alpha Yoke profiles and the Bravo Throttle Quadrant profiles, which that being said, I don't know how many of them fly. I don't know how many of them have flown multiple aircraft. And when I do plug and play, I found a couple issues that I've had to reassign and kind of modify their profiles. Not a big deal. But if you're somebody that's hoping to just jump in the sim, you're going to need to know how to change a few little bits here and there to make it work perfectly. Now, as sim updates go, there might be issues with profiles. This is not strictly a Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 issue. This happens to everything at some point. I've had different versions of X-Plane in the past, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim X and other ones where they didn't update to the sim software and it messed up profiles or completely obliterated use of some uh, uh, hardware or flight sim peripherals like joysticks, yokes, throttle quadrants, and so on down the line. So know how to make your profiles and adapt them. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 Xbox implementation is coming this month when that comes out. And if I get my hands on an Xbox, I can actually play Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and plug in all this stuff. I'll let you guys know. Only problem is I don't have rudder pedals that are gonna work on the, on the Xbox. So it's kind of a redundant or catch 22. I don't know what, what I want to say about it, but I don't have a way to truly test out the Xbox version and tell you how well it works. I'm sure somebody else will. Somebody that's got a lot more followers will probably get a Charlie uh, rudder pedals and be able to give a solid opinion on this. And it will have the Xbox to do it with. I think Obsidian Art or whoever they are, uh, they have a good setup. And maybe even the Flight Sim Hanger guy, he'll get something going too that will give a good review of that, how well it works. But as far as Xbox implementation, I know it's coming. It will be interesting to see it when it comes. X-Plane 11, like I said, is easier to set up the profiles in and its overall plug and play for the Alpha Yoke or the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. It's easy. Just get in there, start making profiles. And if you're new to X-Plane, you'll probably figure out the menu system within five minutes. If you're new to Microsoft Flight like Sim 2020, it might take a little bit more time, but overall, depending on your age potentially, or your overall familiarization and ease of use or comfort level with computers and using them, it could be re either really quick or really slow. So if you guys have questions about that, please feel free to leave comments in the section below. But overall, there's nothing strange or unexpected with sim implementation setup or use. It is a great plug and play, but do take the time to learn to make your own profiles. Now, the last bit, cost. Hmm. $250 is a large sum of money. Depending on what your job is out there, depending on what your bills are, your flight costs for going out and flying a real aircraft flight, some tra flight training overall, whatever it is going on in life, $250 is not chump change. It's a good amount of money. So is the Alpha Yoke worth $250? And I've already probably said it, it is, but if you're just starting out in aviation or flight simming, is this a product for you? I think you need to ask yourself, what's your end goal here? Because I don't want to steer anybody away from the Alpha Yoke, but at the same time, if all you're doing is just sightseeing in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and you're not taking aviation seriously or flight simulation, like this is a passing fad that you're like, oh, everybody's in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, I gotta do it too. 
the alpha yolk might not be for you. If I'm being completely honest, if this is something you're gonna try for maybe five or 10 hours and be completely done with it, the alpha yolk is probably not for you. Go buy a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro or something else that's less than $100, have fun with it, and at the end of the day, if all of a sudden you found yourself hooked, you gotta get into flight sim or flight training and all those other things, get an alpha yoke. Because you'll be really happy you did because when it comes time to practice maneuvers, practice IFR procedures or anything else that you're actually going to end up doing a check ride for or flight simming for in a realistic like environment, the alpha yoke's gonna be for you. Now you do have other offerings. Logitech has a product that used to be a SciTech product. It's okay. If that's all you can afford and all you can get or even find on a shelf somewhere, it's a good enough product that you can do everything with it that it offers the ability to do. Now, can you do it better? Yes. Then you have CH products. Another good system, another good setup of products. Do they do things as well as the Alpha Yoke? No. They're limited. Both the Logitech and the CH products are limited to 45 degree angles of deflection. The Alpha Yoke goes full 90, and it ties in so many other features directly onto the box. So with all that said, value-wise, $250 is not cheap, but if you're trying to implement everything you can onto a piece of equipment, like the Bravo Throttle Quadrant does, the Alpha Yoke does a really good job of standing above all the other competition, being the alpha of the pack, of giving you the ability to cut out a lot of mouse clicks, to make your sim experience as realistic as possible within a realistic price point for most people within flight simulation. It has a lot of switches that are customizable. It has the trims that are customizable. It has a good setup for all the buttons. It has a starter switch. It has great axes that center well. You know, this, I feel like I'm selling myself on it, but I've sold myself on it. I have the product. I love the product and I strongly recommend that if you're in the market and you can afford it and this is not a passing fad, get the Alpha Yoke if you can get it. It's a quality product. You'll be happy with it for hopefully years to come and hopefully there will be nice updates to it, at least software wise, that if there was something you didn't like, they'll have some other features that you can tie into it in the future or some other in integration of other products that Honeycomb will eventually be releasing in the future that have already been hinted on websites out there that this might work really well with and have a nice ecosystem to move forward with, especially if you use the Xbox. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Would I recommend the Alpha Yoke? Yes. If you want to get my personal opinion in person, Come see me at Oshkosh, leave the comments below, and I will have updates on my Instagram account and Facebook here. I'm gonna update those here shortly. I've been away, I've been on vacation, and I took that time to be with the family and completely decompress from a lot of this stuff, even though making these videos is like going back for me to be in a flight instructor, something I don't really have the time to do right now. And this is a nice outlet for that. So thank you guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for my 550 plus subscribers, thank you guys. And let me know what content you want to see next. If you watch this far, I appreciate it. You're watching to the end. Now, there's certain Flight Sim add-ons for either X-Plane 11 or Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Specific questions about both of those sims, either or, feel free to ask them in the comments below and let me know what content you want coming next. The next few months are going to be kind of busy with my flight actual flight schedule. And there are a lot of events coming up for me within the airline I fly for, things going on that will also slow down my production here. So thank you guys for your patience, but do let me know what content you want to see. Joe from NDB Aviation, thank you again so many times over and over. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and I hope to see you at Oshkosh.